Hello, the internet, and welcome to another episode of The Spit Take. My name's Jack O'Brien. I'm the editor-in-chief of Cracked, and Americans tend to think we have the best the world has to offer. Everything good has been turned into a cheesecake factory dish or a takeout restaurant and fed directly to our rich, scientifically advanced faces, right? Well, it turns out, compared to most of the rest of the world and a lot of history, we suck at things like fun, celebrations, and partying. Sure, we've got Christmas and Halloween, pretty great holidays, but so do they. And they also have stuff like German Father's Day, aka Monertag. In the United States, Father's Day is basically Mother's Day with thoughtlessly given neckties instead of thoughtlessly given flowers. But Germans understand that dads don't want that same breakfast in bed bullshit that passes on Mother's Day. Which is why they have Monertag, a day for fathers and sons to fill a wagon with beer, walk into the woods, and get faced. <laughs> As awesome as that sounds, it sort of undersells it. The wagon you roll out into the woods are homemade contraptions known as Bullerwagen, and they range from the beautiful to the awesomely functional. What better way to bond with your dad than to build a beer mobile with a barbecue pit built in? The correct answer is none. There are no better ways to bond with your father than building a rolling beer barbecue pit. Monertag literally translates to man's day and is celebrated with brothers, grandfather, basically anything that identifies as a man and seems fun to get drunk with. It's not celebrated on the same day as Father's Day, it's just known as German Father's Day because they don't have our version of Father's Day because of course they don't. They're too busy quietly respecting each other. Every July when somebody inevitably gets drunk and uses fireworks to badly mangle themselves, there's a general Hey, just America being America, motherfuckers. If you can't handle it, get your ass out the Independence Day vibe to the reaction, at least in my own head. But it turns out other countries look at our fireworks and are like, I piss explosions like this. I have Roman candles larger than this in my stool. These are all word for word quotes, people. Point is, other countries have much harder core pyrotechnic celebrations. There's the Mexican Fireworks Sledgehammer Explosives Festival, so named because well, you can probably guess why it's named that. In Thailand, they also fire Roman candles at the sky. They just attach them to giant, awesome discs that spin skyward like steampunk UFOs. And that don't always work out so well. Or perhaps you prefer Apelia, the annual Scottish festival that doesn't f with the sparkly works part of our 4th of July equation and just hurls fire at ships to celebrate their Viking heritage because how else are you gonna celebrate that? Legally, that's the only music you're allowed to play over that footage. Wow, that's legitimately terrifying. You'll notice they have removed the traditional Viking boat accompaniment of water. Wouldn't want any of that around you when literally everything around you that isn't nailed down is on fire. For people who find that to be too controlled an environment, there's always Ottery St. Mary's Burning Tar Barrel Festival, in which people carry a barrel of fire over their heads until it breaks apart, at which point someone finds themselves holding the contents of a roaring fireplace in their bare hands. Ah! It's a sort of achievement through the years you work your way up to doing the men's barrels. We're trying to guard the tradition to keep it to the same format. No, Dad's getting old. There's a lot of rollers which are coming out of their prime now and we're coming into our prime. And it's down to us to carry on the tradition and make it, make it so we can still have it for our kids in the future. As long as my body's willing, I'll be there. Lucky winner. And of course there's Bolas de Fuego, the El Salvador holiday in which a town of Nejapa divides themselves into two teams, picks up flaming balls wrapped in kerosene-soaked rags, and wings them back and forth at each other. Of course, they're wearing wet gloves, which probably isn't doing much for that guy who just 
got hit in the balls with actual fire. But the greatest fireworks festival happens every Easter, that time of year in America where we get dressed up in paisley finery and search for dyed eggs supposedly hidden by a bunny who leaves baskets of candy and green plastic grass. Just take a moment to appreciate what a complete word salad that sentence is. Anyways, every Easter in Greece, two neighboring cities shoot homemade rockets across the valley that cuts between them in a combination fireworks display citywide paintball fight. The all-night bombardment is called Rocket War, or Rocket Top Elevenmos. Always have to add one too many syllables, don't you, Grease? Anyways, it's f***ing rad. The goal is to hit the other town's church bell while making the sky in between the towns look like Baghdad at night circa Operation Desert Storm. Timely ref. It's worth noting that this all takes place while mass is going on inside. The goal is to hit the other town's bell before mass is over and... They spend the year leading up to Easter making the rockets with their bare hands. So there's even an element of boxcar derby mixed in, if boxcar derbies were the most fun you can have without access to another human being's genitals. Speaking of other human being's genitals, electronic dance music festivals have a certain spicy musk to them. If you're American and don't know what I'm talking about, I don't really blame you. Here's the promotional video for one of America's biggest EDM festivals, the Electric Daisy Carnival. It appears to combine the subtle relatability of Cirque du Soleil with the cheerful consumerism of millennials, all wrapped in a soccer stadium in the desert. What's not to love? Well, it turns out for European EDM fans, the promise of smelling thousands of sun-baked, unwashed butts isn't enough on its own. So they add some flourishes. For instance, That's Tomorrowland, a festival in Belgium that comes with what appears to be Castle Grayskull being filtered through an acid trip. Or perhaps you prefer to worship at the foot of a giant, fire-breathing modern art installation at the Awakenings Festival or the Ultra Music Festival. You gotta love how Euro these names are. We have the ultra cool music man. Time Warp Festival appears to happen underneath a living, breathing final boss from the NES game Contra. Or Mysteryland, which appears to take place in the middle of the forest from a midsummer night's dream. The one place where it's fun to get lost in the trees. When we reach the final hours of the day, the Q Dance stage presents the legends of hardstyle. Full disclosure, most EDM shows look like hell on earth to me, as I'm the rare white person who doesn't like taking MDMA and doing the same dance move for three hours in a row. But it doesn't matter what the activity is, I'd rather do it next to a castle than trapped in a Baptist tent revival that worships glow sticks and body odor in the American desert. Every May, the Bolivian Andes explode into a sort of nightmare spring break. Now I know it doesn't look like fun in the traditional sense of the word, but imagine your town had one day each year where enemies could square off with each other with total impunity, get it out of their system, like a fist fight the purge. Second someone bleeds on the ground, it's a wrap. And you don't have to feel bad for punching your coach who took Little League too seriously because your mom has a fistful of her nosy neighbor's hair in her hand yelling, I'll stop when you bleed, bitch. Your mom 
talks like clubber lang for some reason. A sociologist who studies these tribes compares it to American high school football, which is sort of right. But imagine that each town in Texas only had one high school football game a year. It was three days long, it was the only time each year anyone in town could drink, and the whole family had to play. I'm not saying it's necessarily better than our Christmas. I'm just saying, until you've gotten historically drunk with your grandfather and then fought the kid who never grew an inch after he bullied you in elementary school, you can't tell me it's not. Oh, do you guys like to party? Tell me about it in the... <laughs> yes! <laughs> do you guys have your own weird traditions that I didn't highlight? Film them and send them to my house and I will personally watch them. It won't be creepy, I promise. Or just tell me about them in the comment section. Thanks.